Hey everybody, and welcome to the first Battle Report pre-show for the channel. With me in the call is Matt, and this match coming up will be my Salamanders versus his Death Guard. Hello. Yes, welcome. Thank you for joining me, Matt. So, as you guys have probably noticed, the format's a bit different than your typical Battle Report pre-show, but based on the logistics between all of us and the format of this uh, battle report framework this is probably the most convenient setup for us so hopefully you guys don't mind and maybe it'll provide what i hope will be a unique take on the battle report pre-show format yeah should be fun with a I, little tweak here and there yeah uh i've been informed that my microphone quality is not the greatest so hopefully I can rectify that for future pre-shows, but for the time being, we just have to kind of grassroots this for this first episode. Yeah, we got a deadline. Got to make it. Yeah. Anyways, so for this game one uh, battle between the Firekeepers and the Endless Blight, we'll be playing Mission 4, Maelstrom of War, uh, which is Disruptive Tactics. And as you would imagine, I mean, all Maelstrom missions are kind of the same. Right, we're using tactical objective cards, making our decks up to 18 cards, or up to a minimum of 18 cards. But the hook of Disruptive Tactics is that at the start of each player's turn, before putting any cards into play, the active player reveals the top three cards in their deck, and their opponent selects one of them to go at the bottom of their objective deck, and the remaining two to go back to the top of their deck in the order they desire. So it's a pretty, uh, I think it'll be a pretty cheeky game with both players, like, literally disrupting the tactics of the subsequent turns for each, for each other, right? But yeah, we won't I be, so. uh, but with regards to what we have in our hands and on the table, we are not disrupting that. So it's going to be kind of a, I don't know, I want to say cat and mouse, but it'll be very interesting because it'll always be between both of us making it as hard as possible for us to score objectives. So it should be really fun relative to the previous Maelstrom of War games that I've played. Yeah, I agree. I think I think this one is going to be a lot um, tactically flexible rather than like uh, the previous um, in 2018 that used to pick two cards or draw two cards and your opponent discarded one of them or put it to the bottom of the deck. This one is a little more flexible with how you can kind of plan out your next couple of turns and and obviously score um, things that are, you know, achievable rather than, oh, I, I picked the one one tactical objective card that you are going to have no chance of scoring. So I like it. I think it's going to be, um, I like all the 2019 um, missions a lot better, like the Maelstrom ones. So. Oh, yeah, they seem way better. And I think if I really, actually, if I really think about it, I don't think I even played any Maelstrom of War games in 2018, just because I did not like how random and uh, out of my hands the, the, the cards and the objectives felt. It, it was a lot of Eternal War um, missions played, especially in our play group, but I have played each one once from 2018. I'm looking forward to playing throughout the season, the 2019 ones, so... Uh, I buy the cards. I pay the whatever twenty dollars for the cards. So I may as well be using them. That's how I feel too. And finally, uh, I don't feel bad about the prospect. So I'm I'm keen to try it out and play these Maelstrom of War games for this season. But I think with that, we can get onto the list breakdown, right? Uh, the missions covered, matchups been declared. Um, so do you want to start with me? I guess. Uh sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's hear the old Firekeepers list. Alrighty, so the list is broken down into two detachments, and each of those deta detachments, excuse me, are a battalion. So it's pretty standard current 8th edition meta stuff where, you know, by and large, everyone's doing two battalions as their CP base, right? Yeah, generally a double battalion is really, really popular. Uh, I see a lot of brigades now, too, with all the points reductions across. Yeah, brigade's something... I'd be interested in trying, but maybe I'll save that for a different list. This time, which I'll reveal to you for the first time on the channel. <laughs> well, what I mean is, we should probably mention that, yeah, we've written these lists blind to each other, and this is sort of the first time we are revealing it to each other, so it's kind of like we don't exactly... We haven't written either of our lists to counter exactly what we're bringing because we didn't know prior. 
Yeah, generally we only knew I knew playing Salamanders and he knew I would be playing Death Guard, but the units that we pick, the war gear that we pick, uh, are, is blind to you. So verbal, concrete evidence of a, a list lock-in for the season, for the season one. Uh, or the first match of the season. So uh, um, in future games, we'll be able to sub out models here and there, depending on who you're playing. But you'll never know what your opponent's list is going to be other than their faction. So you got you it. might be able to gauge gauge some you know advantages here. And I know that he's a salamander. I can kind of play to uh, you know retreat away from that like eight inch to twelve inch spot of flame through throwers because i'm i'm assuming you're gonna have flamers but yeah i i definitely have to bring some flamers right <laughs> it, it kind of goes without saying with the new supplement and everything now that i feel it's kind of valid to bring flamers um i grabbed a whole bunch for this i guess debut battle report for the fire keepers okay so onto the units themselves in the first battalion uh well, so taking up the first hq slot is a standard non-primaris captain he has a combi flamer and a relic blade and he is the warlord and i've given him the warlord trait lord of fire and the free relic in the list replaces his combi flamer with uh, nocturne's vengeance which is the uh, relic combi flamer from the salamander supplement and it's pretty sweet I, <clears throat> excuse me i think it's a pretty sweet relic because um, the flamer profile especially is 12 inches which is the big sale uh, or the big sell for me, because most flamers that any infantry has across all space marines are just 8 inches, right? Yeah, and this one happens to be a 12-inch one. Oh yeah, it's significant. So his Warlord trade will allow him to re-roll his D6 shots, which is going to drastically um, correct the reliability of those random shot quantities for him and anyone within 6 inches. And his mm -hmm. combi flamer's profile is the same, uh, the damage profile, so the strength, AP, and damage is exactly, uh, it exactly mimics the mastercrafted uh, bolt gun. So it's four minus one, two damage flat. And for a flamer that yeah. has that much range, you're adding ones to wound and auto hitting, it's it's pretty good. So I'm very keen to yeah, try right. and get that flamer into action. Uh, and do, so that was your first HQ? Yeah, it's the first HQ. The second HQ is a stock standard Primaris Lieutenant with the, uh, mass, or sorry, the auto bolt rifle, the mastercrafted auto bolt rifle. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> and I've spent one CP to replace his, uh, mastercrafted auto bolt rifle with the Bellicus bolt rifle, which has one extra shot, one extra strength, and one extra AP. Which is great. It, that's a good. Uh... Yeah, it's a nice uh, cheap relic that adds some uh, more volume. Is always good and extra strength and AP. You can't go wrong, right? Exactly. So, filling out the troop slots of the battalion are three intercessor squads. They each squad is a five man squad. The first two are stalker bolt rifle squads, and the last one is the standard bolt rifle squad. And all of them have auxiliary grenade launchers. I like it. It's it's tons of wounds. It's um, it's a you know, uh, yeah. There's nothing really much else to say. Uh, yeah, the, the stalker bolt and yeah. Intercessors are a great troop choice. Like currently in the meta for their points, they're actually I'd say amazing for their points. Um, so you know, taking three squads is kind of a no brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that's it for the troops of that attachment. Onto the elites, we have. The first meaty unit, which is a three-man squad, uh, three-man Centurion Assault Squad with Hurricane Bolters and Flamers, which will work with uh, the Lord of Fire Warlord trait that we covered previously. Mm -hmm. I like them. I, I like Centurions, uh, especially the Assault Centurions. I, you, you can't go wrong with either them or with... A, I'm, I'm more leaning towards the centurion part of it um i think I, tougher in your army they're they're much able uh plus they hit way harder the d d3 damage versus flat three damage on a strength 10 rather than strength eight i think it's good it's good good unit yeah relative to the aggressors right yes relative to the, to the aggressors 
Yeah, I will bring aggressors in a different list, but for this debut, I wanted to bring my converted uh, centurions, which I, which were featured on the channel previously in like a tutorial style video. So now we can see the the fruits of that labor and mm -hmm. have them hopefully uh, dish out some. They'll char up some some bodies, hopefully. Come on. All right. So the next uh, and last elite of this detachment is a company ancient. Very standard. It's not not a primaris one, just a standard firstborn marine with a combi flamer and the company standard or the Astartes banner. So maybe maybe not. Um, some guys can on a four up if they die, they can shoot. He holds the flag. He makes them shoot. He makes them punch. Yeah, like it's it. pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. In the fast attack slot, I have a three man inceptor squad. So these guys add a little bit of. You know, flexibility in a Maelstrom game, Salamanders are kind of a slower moving, less dynamic army, relatively. So I find having uh, some deep strike elements and Inceptors are great because they still move 10 if they, you know, for subsequent turns, they're pretty handy. And I, never, I find them to be very clutch and in every game I've taken them, I've never regretted it. No, I mean, it's, it's a good backfield. Um, they've got basically heavy bolters 18 inch range heavy bolters um yeah you can clear lots of chaff you can even like a bit more of an aggressive um like forward moving rather than deep strike so i like them they're good yeah i think so i think so as well they're very good um all right let's move move it along here we have in the heavy support the contemptor mortis dreadnought with twin last cannons, or two twin last cannons. Uh, nothing much to say about them. I mean, Contemptors are a great, like a really good anti-tank choice for Marines, I think, with the two last cannons. It's just, it hits extremely accurately, and it wounds very well with those four last cannons. And with Salamanders, I can reroll one of those. So on average, I usually hit with all four and wound with all four, usually, right? Yep, no, I know. On average, uh, through nothing really else to say. Mortis contemptors are really good for their points, and they with the with the dreadnought stratagem, you, they're really. And he degrades, not too terribly either. It's basically down to the last bracket, and he's still hitting on fours. Yeah, and that's not at all bad, because he'll be standing no, still most of the time, anyways. So. He won't feel the mm -hmm. degrading as much. At least I hope so. Anyhow, the last <laughs> the last heavy support option is not as competitively uh, sound as the Contemptor Mortis. It is a land raider redeemer. Uh, this guy has, you know, the two big flamers. It's probably the punchiest flamer I think that's available to the Astartes. It's 12 inch range, heavy D6, strength six minus two, two damage. Um, and it's performed surprisingly surprisingly well ever since the supplement dropped and we had the built-in add one to wound. It's just such a good, strength six is a great place to be for an auto-hitting weapon that can, you know, you can reroll the quantity of your shots or you can pay two CP and just full blast 12 shots. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, full blasting basically Avenger Gatling Cannons from an imperial knight is is pretty meaty and especially on the body of land like no joke i won't i have not very much ways of killing you, you might keep that thing the entire game <laughs> to be honest that's usually what happens i mean most people want to kill the contemptor mortis anyways and then because of the second powers i have taken in the list like you'll see in the second detachment Typically, I'm buffing up the Land Raider Redeemer. People don't want to shoot at it because the threat range isn't as immediately dangerous anyways. So it usually lasts around till the end of the game and most of the games since the Codex has dropped. Well, I'm terrified. So what uh, what possibly could you have in the second battalion? Right. Oh, yeah. Real quick before we go into the second battalion, I paid for the multi Melta and Stormbolter um, on this. Uh, those are the options on the optional uh, weapon uh, add-ons you can take. So I just want to make sure I mentioned that I've taken those because uh, the multi melter does help provide a little bit more anti-tank support. But mm -hmm. onto the second attachment, it's led by a Chaplain Venerable Dreadnought. He has the uh, Dreadnought Power Fist, or sorry, the Dreadnought Combat Weapon and a 
with a storm bolter underneath, underslung, and the two twin last cannons on his uh, right arm. And he has the litany, the Catechism of Fire. So they're adding one to wound to the nearest unit. I, yeah. I like I like them. Red knots. I think they're I think they're they're good because they're characters. They're under ten wounds, so they can't be targeted. It's got two last cannons. I I think a lot more people should be using them uh, with points to spare, obviously. But um, no, I, I really like them. I, I actually future future armies. I would actually like to use one as well. Yeah, I think for uh, for the points that he's getting, it's very similar in my mind as like in terms of fulfilling a role as the Contemptor Mortis, uh, just because it's too a ballistic skill. Casting litanies is just kind of like icing on the cake in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the second HQ in my in that detachment is the Primaris Librarian, and he's been given an additional relic as well uh, for the Tome of Velcana. And that allows that uh, plus one. yeah plus one to Salamander's uh, Prometheus discipline powers, and the mm -hmm. two powers he knows are Fire Shield and Drake Skin, and those are the powers I was mentioning that uh, buff the Land Raider. Or I mean, it could buff any unit actually, but typically it goes in the Land Raider, and then should it die, I kind of just like whatever is more critical to defend because those are two really good defensive buffs: the minus one to hit, which also includes the minus one to charge, and uh, plus one toughness. Like you can't go wrong with those quality of life buffs. Yeah, I think uh, I think Salamander's got some really good, uh, albeit not the most offensive, but defensive. Yeah, and I find that that that's kind of what they needed in a weird way: either more range or more resiliency to get into range. And we got the latter. Mm -hmm. So for the troops of this second detachment, uh, it's we have a five-man incursor squad with the Haywire Mine. And we have two scout squads, and each of the squads have a heavy weapon, uh, one being a heavy bolter, one with being a missile launcher, and both both squad sergeants have chain swords because that's what they're modeled with. Cool, cool. And the last two units in the detachment in the elites, we have an ironclad dreadnought. Um, I'm a big fan of ironclads. I think for their points, they're pretty good. The hurricane bolters are nice. The seismic hammers are badass, and Underslung on his seismic hammer is a melta gun, and the two hundred killer missiles are are not too bad. You know, I mean they're one off shots, but they aren't terribly unreliable with the salamander's reroll. So he can try to do some damage as it gets into melee range. I like it. I like the seismic hammer. Oh it's yeah, it's like a classic, like a classic dreadnought kind of. Yeah, it's so cool. And on the boxy dreadnought, it, it just I don't know. They they look yeah. so adorably. Like cute, I want to say, but in comparison to the newer yeah. models, anyways. But I don't know. I think it's it's kind of badass. Me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the last unit I have here is a Devastator Squad because they're really flexible. Um, I didn't max out last cannons or anything like that. Um, I just took one missile launcher, one last cannon, a cherub, and two bolt guns, and I think the sergeant has a com uh, storm bolter. Uh, to to just manipulate the points in such a way for my list to close at 2,000 points. And that's the list. I didn't take any extra Warlord traits or anything like that, but I did take two extra Relics. So 2,000 points, starting with 11 CP. Cool. That sounds good. Um, did you want me to start going? Yeah, um, I don't think there's anything left to say. I wanted to bring a thematic, uh, good represent a good debut list. You know, represent some flame weapons for the salamanders, and not have a full primaris thing. So there's a little bit of both, of the firstborn and uh, primaris type. I think it's good. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility with, with the army. You have good anti-tank, good anti-infantry. Uh, um, you have enough CP to do what you need to do for multiple turns you know, a couple of re-rolls here and there, so I think it's good. Yeah, let's see how your list looks in comparison, and then I'll start getting anxiety, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'm just doing a single battalion and a single spearhead. Um, Death Guard are pretty expensive, so I don't have a lot of play for the most part. Um, I'll start with the spearhead just because it's it's quick. It's a single Chaos Lord, 
uh, with a Bale Sword and a Combi Plasma. Um, he's like the cheapest HQ I can get. Um, and yeah, it's, it's all I can kind of fill. Uh, I didn't want to go too big with anything else. Um, I have a single Foul Blight Spawn in the Elite section of the spear, Spearhead. That's the um, Super Flinkthrower guy uh, with the 2d6 strength, d6 for the shots, and negative 3 flat 3 damage. Very way off, scary. Um, Very yeah. scary unit. He He's probably about the only thing that I can do to chunk that Land Raider, so he, he might... He, He's gonna have to walk up the board and get to him, but um, and then it, to round out the spearhead part, I've got three plague burst crawlers, um, and I'm actually gonna try out the entropy cannons uh, instead of the uh, plague spitters. Uh, they got a bit of a reduction in chapter approved, so I wanted to give them a try. Nice. I know, um, you don't see those all that often. Usually, everyone opts for the flamer, so it's a little bit of a different take. Yeah, the flamer is usually a bit more competitive, but I don't know. It's something to something to try and kind of sit them in the back, be a little bit more like long range. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, going into the battalion, uh, I have a Nurgle Demon Prince uh, on the front cover of my uh, debut photos. Uh, oh, Orbifox, right? Ever blight. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I love him. He's wicked. Man. So he's a uh, he's the creature caster demon prince. He's uh, got wings. He's got malefic talons because that's more of the competitive thing. But future future matches, I would like to try um, maybe an axe. Uh, I have a cool um, pair of weapons for him. Um, he like I said, he's got wings. Uh, he's got the warlord trait revolting resilience so he adds one to his disgusting resilient i'm going to make him a little bit more of a beat stick rather than sit in the back and be like the arch contaminator for death right um he only gets that on uh non-mortal wounds though so four up involve or four up feel no pain uh other than mortal wounds and then five up feel no pain uh against everything that is <laughs> <laughs> um and then also got the separating plate which is my relic which gives him a two plus save and in the fight phase whenever he passes a save on a four plus he passes it into mortal wounds onto the unit that so yeah he's he's just a beat stick he, i like him yeah very resilient one too like the way you've stacked him with the trait and the relic yeah and i kind of want to run him up the board a bit more rather than you know uh, keep them in the back. I, I want to be a little more aggressive with um, Going down, I'm going to take Necrosis the Undying. He's, for his points, he's just a uh, hundred times better than a regular sorcerer. Uh, uh, he can cast two, deny three. He's toughness five rather than toughness four. He's got six wounds for whatever reason rather than four wounds. He comes with an invul save for uh, a four-up invul save better than the, than anything else. Um, he gets Disgusting Resilience, which is better than the Sorcerer. Um, he happens to be a... Uh, so only for Poxwalkers. So Poxwalkers can reroll ones for their Disgusting Resilience. Um, and yeah, the thing about him, he's just he's just 100% better than a regular Sorcerer. Um, and I have a cool model that Kyle happened to get from me from the Japan, um, Japan War, uh, Space Marine Heroes. Uh, sorcerer from the painting set. Oh, I'm happy to see him being used, man. He looks awesome, and you've done a good job painting him too. And it's a pretty <laughs> solid stand-in for Necrosius, I think. Yeah, Necrosius is very dated. He's an old Forge World model. Um, he, the way he's uh, portrayed and the way that that model is, he's got a staff, um, just like the model. Uh, he's got a bolt pistol, just like the model. Um, so yeah, just uh, I'm uh, for 135 versus like 70 for a sorcerer. Um, you can't go wrong. He's he's a really good. Uh, moving down the list, uh, I've got uh, three troops obviously for the battalion. Um, I I'm a diehard. I want to bring plague marines, so I I brought a five man unit of plague marines. Um, the leader has a plasma gun, and the two goons in there also have plasma guns. So it's three plasma guns toting around, and then there's two extra guys. Uh, obligatory wounds um so they're just they're nice they're cheap uh cheap ish unit 114 points for five guys they're t5 
Uh, and then the the other two troop choices are two big units of 20-man pox walkers. So 40 pox walkers total. They're going to either screen something or hunker down an objective. Uh, they will die quickly to the many flamethrowers that you have, but we shall see. Very interesting. That's the total? That's um, that's just uh, for the troops. Um, going down the list into my uh, elites, I have three elites total. I've got two more, more foul blight spawn to round it out to three. So really, they, they are my Ooh, elites. <laughs> a little scary, those characters, man. I have to, it'll be something I have to definitely keep in mind to understand their threat so you, range and you gotta, you gotta think a few turns ahead. With them. Like they got the nine in their assault um, so they can run uh, and shoot. And then to round out the the elites, I've got a big 10-man unit of Blight Lord Terminators. They're the most competitive. Um, I like them. They're cool model. Um, they're what Terminators really should be. Um, they're super tough. They're really hard to shift. Uh, I've had multiple games where uh, armies shoot at them and them alone, and it takes them two, three, four turns to actually wipe the entire unit out. Oh yeah, man. I've I think I've witnessed you use them quite a few times, and like I'm quite I'm quite jealous of any army that can flex Terminators in Eighth Edition. And the Blight Lords <laughs> are just ah, they're so awesome, as you said, man. I can't sum it up better than that. They're re they really feel like how Terminators should be. Uh, they really do, and and they reflect their points. They they are literally a quarter of my army. They're 432 points for all ten of them. There's two flails, there's two blight launchers, the rest of them have axes. So, yeah, it's a great unit. Um, they do a lot of work for me. I And I it's hard for me to not write a list without at least five, but I usually just bite the bullet and go to ten. I think it's um, worth it for, for Death Guard Terminators. I think you should. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving down the list, uh, for fast attack, I have one fast attack. Um, it is a Bowtied Bloat Drone. Can't, can't, can't say much about it. Uh, it's a 10 wound, toughness 7, flying vehicle. Uh, it's got the two flesh uh, pl plague spitters. Um, so similar in the vein of your interceptors, uh, I'm just going to run around the back, try and take out some chaff, go for Yeah, there. the Foated Bloat Drone is, like you said, I, I mean... It's been around since space, basically eight started because it came out with Dark Imperium, and they've definitely left their mark. I think on the meta, like everyone's played against them and seen them at this point. But you can't really go wrong. They're an awesome thematic, unique unit for the Death Guard, and giving you that mobility for an army again that's relatively slower. Uh, Death Guard more so than even normal Marines. It definitely is exactly. uh, provides some really good utility. No, I agree. It's uh, I I would I wish they were in units. I wish they weren't individuals, uh, so I could maybe run or you know two units of, of three. Um, it, yeah, I just I like them. They they're pretty good. Uh, to round out the list though, the last thing in my army is just a simple chaos rhino. It's, uh, it's got two combi bolters. I I modeled it up kind of cool. Uh, it's got a lot of like yucky parts on it, so. Yeah, I love what you've done with it. It's like a corpse van or something. It looks wicked. Yeah, yeah just like you have a fire truck, or like a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's that's it. That's the whole list. That rhino will probably be. Uh, it'll have the foul blight spawn in it and the plague marines. And they'll try and run up the side of the. Board. Um. But yeah, that's the list total. Um, nineteen ninety eight points on the dot. Oh, so I have a two point little, advantage. Bit, yeah, I'm 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 a little bit a little bit less. Well, if well if I win, well we know why. It's just because I'm basically cheating. <laughs> you just got two extra. Anything uh, in closing about your list? I think. No, it's just typical Death Guard. It, we, we, you and I both have a typical, like slow moving trudge up the middle of the board, take the middle uh, center, and then just kind of branch up from there. So you and I are probably going to be in a like a grinding game. Like you and I are going to meet in the middle and just kind of in outlast the other and push the other back. I think that's how it's 
Yeah, well said. Uh, that's the feeling I had as well. They're kind of like foils of each other to a degree, you know, slower moving, tougher than your, you know, generic marine with and uh, shorter range, though, but hitting harder. So it should be uh, a real grudge match, I think. I think so. I think it's going to be good. And it's been a while since you and I actually played a real game. Yes, it'll be good. Okay, so I think that brings this pre-show to a close. Uh, uh, thanks for watching, guys. The format, like I mentioned earlier, is a little different, but hopefully it provides you guys something unique. Please leave a comment below and let us know uh, your thoughts, criticisms. Uh, let us know. And I think that's it. Any closing remarks, Matt? No, we'll see you on the battlefield. Yes, we'll see you guys on the battlefield.